Hi, my name is Mary Baker and I survived Hurricanes Katrina and Rita. Hurricane Katrina hit the Gulf Coast of Mississippi and then by New Orleans as well in August of 2005. For Hurricane Katrina, we did evacuate and we just got in a car and headed uh, kind of west-northwest as far as we could go until um, there was a place for us to stay. Fortunately, um, we didn't have much damage at my house, but the people around me, they all had a lot of flooding if they had a house at all after the hurricane. So I feel very fortunate, but a lot of people I know did have tremendous loss. When Hurricane Rita hit, it was shortly after uh, Hurricane Katrina. People really didn't even recover from Hurricane Katrina yet, so everyone was terrified because it was such a traumatic experience. So uh, most people tried to evacuate and actually more people died during evacuating than they did during the storm. And people got uh, heat exhaustion and dehydration. So many of the roads and bridges were destroyed during Hurricane Katrina. So during Hurricane Rita, there were a lot of problems trying to get out and evacuate. So another, another thing about hurricanes is that they don't affect just people, but they also affect the animals. So not only do people try to get to higher ground, but also cattle and even snakes, you know, all kinds of animals. One common snake in the swamps are water moccasins. So water moccasins are super dangerous poisonous snakes that you want to stay away from. So if you see those in a hurricane, make sure you stay away. The interesting thing after Hurricane Katrina was the devastation that occurred. There was mounds of trash that was stories high. So Highway 90 along the coast was almost all gone. They had to rebuild that. It was just, you know, an interstate that goes all along the, high, the uh, coastline. And it was just amazing to see how water can have so much impact on, uh, on what we make as humans. Now, some communities were completely wiped out, like my great aunt's community where she was living and the whole community. There was nothing there but concrete slabs and the water pipes sticking up, so that was it. And then in other places, there were buildings on top of where other buildings used to be. So it was this eerie kind of situation where you're like, oh, where's the Wendy's? Oh, it's under the casino. Another thing that was very memorable to me was that when I was driving down the street from my mom's house, there were boats in random people's yards. So they had floated up from, from the water and they were just stuck in the middle of fields and in people's yards and then there were also um, mud and sticks in all the houses so some people shoveled for like six months to get that out of their houses. I remember volunteering at the Cajun Dome. At the Cajun Dome every refugee was given a cot like a small little cot and uh, and that was their space so they had to put all of the possessions that they had underneath or on top of the cot. For the most part it was just one cot lined up right after the other with no space in between. So it was uh, unreal the amount of people that, that needed help and needed a place to stay. So my main advice is if you do encounter a hurricane at some point in your life, is to evacuate. So um, definitely, you know, don't wait until the last minute because the roads tend to get congested with traffic. If you get stuck somewhere, you need to make sure that you have a flashlight, some method of communication rather than just a cell phone because cell phones will likely not work after a hurricane. Mine did not work after any of the hurricanes that I was in. After Hurricane Katrina, it didn't work for a month. After some of the other hurricanes, it was like two weeks. And so we went that long uh, without electricity or cell phones. So you need to make sure that you have clean water. So we often filled our bathtubs with water to make sure that we had enough water to, to survive and, um, and stay clean. You want to make sure that you have enough food and first aid supplies as well. Just in case anything happens, you have lots of debris that falls, you'll have lots of debris in your yard and in your community, and it's easy to get a flat tire, to get stranded somewhere, to step on something on accident. It's very easy to get hurt after you know, such a storm. So it was definitely a time of chaos, but at the same time, people came together and really helped one another.